Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about 10 vocabulary words that will correspond to our Native American vocabulary, and we'll go ahead and get started. is the word interior. Interior means within or inside, relating to the inside, inner. So as you can see, the arrow is pointing to the interior of the house. You can think of the word interior as inside. Relating to Native Americans, here is the interior of a longhouse. The interior of a teepee the interior of a Pueblo home. The next word is settlement. A place inhabited or lived in by people, an established community. You're familiar with the Jamestown settlement shown in this picture. Native Americans also lived in settlements. Here is a watercolor painting done by John White in the 1500s about the Native Americans he found living in Virginia. As you can see, their longhouses are grouped together in a community. This is a settlement. Here's a settlement of teepees out in the Midwest. And here's a settlement of Pueblo homes, another Native American dwelling place. And finally, here are the or a settlement of igloos. Natural resources is a term you should be familiar with. It means that there are many materials that people use and have used that are found in nature, such as minerals, forests, water, and farmable land. You can see the forest in this picture, and the forest is used for lumber that we can use to build houses, furniture, and paper. Wind is another natural resources or another natural resource. Solar power is a natural resource from the sun. Water is a natural resource, and hydroelectric power can be used by water as well, providing a natural resource as a form of energy. Soil is a natural resource. Oil is a natural resource. Fish and wildlife are a natural resource that we use for eating. And coal is a natural resource that we mine in order to produce a type of fuel. These are all natural resources. They come from nature and are used by man. Human resources are the people or the humans who do the job or make the product or build the technology that makes a product. When you think human resources, think people. In terms of Native Americans, the fishermen in this picture, those who might be spear fishing or with a net, are the human resources in this drawing. The hunter. Hunting the buffalo is the human resource in this picture. The woman weaving the basket is the human resource constructing this basket. The warriors who are burning the dugout canoe are the human resource as they are constructing their canoe. And finally, the two natives who are working on building this longhouse are the human resources in this photograph. A capital resource describes goods produced and used to make other goods and services. Basic categories of capital resources could include tools, equipment, buildings, and machinery. I like the picture in the bottom right corner that shows a lot of Native American tools that were used for cooking, sewing, and many other types of work. All of these tools are capital resources that would have been used by Native Americans. Capital resources also could include this pot that is put in the fire and used to cook the stew that Native Americans might have made for their family. This bow and arrows are 
capital resources that would have been used as a tool for hunting. And these arrowheads, the tips of the arrows, are again a capital resource that was used in order to do the hunting required for survival in Native American life. These are all capital resources. The term primary sources is a review term and it tells about an event and is from the actual time of that event. Think of letters, photographs, journals. Primary sources also include newspapers and at the actual buildings or ruins that people of ancient times or of, of people in the past lived in. It also, primary sources also include objects like Abraham Lincoln's hat displayed here in a Smithsonian Museum. Confederate money, as long as it's the actual money that was used during the 1860s, this is a primary source as well. This map made by John Smith in the early 1600s is a primary source. This helmet recovered from an archaeological dig in Jamestown is a primary source because it is an actual object that was used at the time of Jamestown settlement. This cartoon is also a primary source designed by Benjamin Franklin right before the Revolutionary War. It is a primary source. And this tiara that was worn by Queen Victoria in England is also a primary source. This is the actual tiara she wore on her head during her reign. Secondary next term. And these sources tell about an event, but they are from a time after the event and usually talk about a primary source as something having happened in the past. Check out the textbook in the right hand corner and the encyclopedia set in the middle and the history magazine on the left. These are all secondary sources. They may contain photographs or pictures of primary sources, but they were written after the event. Biographies are secondary sources. So are websites that contain articles about people's lives who lived in the past. The Colonial Williamsburg website is a wonderful resource that shows many primary sources or reproductions, but it is a secondary source. This book about uniforms of World War II is a secondary source. And so is this PBS home video collection done by Ken Burns on the Civil War. The, this set of DVDs is a secondary source. Yes, they show real photographs and read real letters on this particular DVD. But because it was made after the fact, it is describing and telling the story from a perspective of someone who was not present during the Civil War. Secondary sources also include all the shows on the History Channel that tell about primary sources and events that truly did happen, but again, they were created after the fact. Pueblo is your next term, and it can represent two different ideas that are related in meaning. Pueblo is an American Indian settlement of the southwestern United States, especially one that consisted of multi-storied adobe houses built by the Pueblo people. So Pueblo is a term that can be both a descriptive word, but it can also be used as a noun or a place. Pueblo houses, Pueblo people, and the Pueblo tribes. Pueblo can be each of these things, the describing of the people and the tribes, but also the clay-shaped homes that were made of Pueblo, or the Pueblo homes made by the clay. These are Pueblo homes. These are Pueblo people. The word disperse is an action word, and it means to distribute or spread over a wide area, or to scatter. As you can see, this deck of cards is in one pile. But as we follow the chain of events, we see them being handed out. This is a form of being dispersed. The cards are dispersed. They are scattered. 
Here are a few little black dots dispersing from the word scatter. And here is a man who is dispersing money up into the air. Now, how is this related to Native Americans? Well, check out the map and the red line. Many of the first peoples, or the first peoples who settled in North America, came by way, way of the Bering Strait. If you follow the line from the left to the right, you will notice that the red line branches into several different areas as we get to the United States. This is the idea that first Americans dispersed after they migrated across this path. Again, you can see it from this angle as well. The green line starts over in Siberia at the top left corner, and as you follow the green line, it branches off into several directions. This is the idea that the early native peoples dispersed all over America and the North American continent to settle. You can even see them going down into Central America. These are the possible migration routes of the early Indians and the way that the peoples dispersed. Finally, your last word is inhabit. Inhabit can mean a person can inhabit, an animal can inhabit, or a group can inhabit. Inhabit is another word for live in or occupy a place or environment. Right there, you can see the Quakiotl people. Quakiotl people, sorry, I'm still learning that word. And their settlement, how they inhabit that piece of land. On this map, you can see where the Quakiotl people Quakiotl people settled in red along the North American um, Pacific Rim. The Quakiotl tribe inhabited this area of North America. Here's a map of many of the tribes of the Indian nation all over North America and where they inhabited before English settlement.